guys on this episode of building the X set I'm going to be showing you guys how to install the emergency brake or parking brake whatever you want to call it uh, I am using the stock Miata parking brake I did purchase new cables uh, but other than that basically it's a stock um, uh, rear parking brake uh, system so nothing crazy there I already have it mostly installed I'm just gonna start off showing you guys my line routing that I uh, made where I'm gonna put some mounts uh, for the cables and then where exactly I mounted the e-brake lever which always seems to be the most popular question is where exactly should you mount it so let's get to it so first thing here as you can see this is the parking brake lever for the caliper slots through there then mounts to this mounting location and I purchased new lines from Advanced Auto uh, the I believe it's passenger side line is a tad bit longer than the driver side line but probably not long enough uh, not much enough of a difference that uh, it's really important in my opinion but just so you know that if you did save your old hardware uh, these ones after 30% off coupon to Advanced I think ran about $52 um, that was second day aired from them for free so uh, not a bad deal so might not be a bad idea just go ahead and get new parking brake cables basically the first cable here runs here and these are the mounts for the stock there is a way and I will show you in a couple video in a little bit here um, that you can mount this to the rear subframe basically that tucks through and then comes out this bottom channel here basically how they go is they route right through this these holes here and into this then you can either use your stock um, hose locks here or you can go to AutoZone and just search under Miata and Dorman has some, I think it's like three bucks or maybe it's five bucks for a pack of two uh, hose locks here to hold them into this location. To the passenger side of the car here, you'll see once again, same setup at the e-brake. However, this one here needs to go up and over the power plant frame there. And once it's over the power plant frame and the drive line, it can sneak along through the top here and come through this hole here. Okay, now we are under the rear end of the car. As you can see, this here is the driver's side. Oops, sorry, let me get my light balanced here. I'm trying to balance it on my arm. As you can see, this here is the driver's side cable. And you can see it's quite a bit longer than needed, really. One thing that can be done is... Let me get it out of the way here. You can... And I think I'm going to go ahead and do this. Drill a hole here and then a hole for this lever next to it. And bolt, put a rib nut in there and bolt it to the, uh, to the back of the subframe if you desire. On the passenger side here, you can, as you can see, do the same thing. Let me get the light over here. could if you wanted to drill and tap or drill and riv nut for a mounting location there to keep it out of the way um, the one issue I'm having here on this driver's side cable is it's coming into contact with the drive line here so I need to figure out a way to either get this cable more up like this maybe put a mounting location something like that there and that will allow that cable to clear the drive line over here this is kind of protected because the subframe uh, will be uh, or excuse me the power plant frame will be protecting the cable from hitting the drive line the other thing I do need to look at is getting some sort of uh, grommet around here and around here to protect the casing on the wire. Um, because as it is, it is rubbing against and chafing against this uh, the hole drilled in the metal here. So once I tear it down, I'll probably be taking some rubber um, sort of grommet to put in there to protect that. So. That's it for underneath the car here, so you guys can kind of see the fitment and how that's ran. Um, I would suggest, like I'm going to do, maybe take these two and zip tying them up like this. And or making some sort of mount 
to the frame or to the subframe here to keep these lines up out of the way. And now, so for your connections here, basically you want to put this, uh, I don't know what you call it, two into one here that takes the two parking brake lever uh, cables, connects them, and this is what will pull when you activate the parking brake. Now, as you can see on the parking brake here, there are three mounting locations for the bolts. These need to be drilled into your welded in portion of your trans tunnel. Now this is the approximate, or I guess the actual location of where I am have drilled and I'm going to be mounting the parking brake cable. That will basically, I can't pull it tight with one hand here, but basically have it mounted in about this location here. So just so you can see, you know, we're fairly close, about a half inch here on this one, about an inch here on this one, and then I just kind of leveled out the pedal from there. That gives the maximum tension I can, and unfortunately you can't pull the parking brake until it is fully mounted to see if it's engaging right, so it's a little nerve-wracking, especially if you have a powder-coated chassis, because if you drill those holes wrong, you may need to drill them again farther forward if, or, or farther back if for some reason it is not um, it's not uh, tensioning correctly. Nice thing is mine is not powder coated yet, so if I don't like this, I can always uh, fill these holes with some weld, grind them down, and remount. So that's all for the parking brake cable. Uh, you know, it's not much info on it, but it's pretty straightforward. Um, basically just pretty much stock. The only difference is the routing and getting it up to here. But other than that, a uh, couple hours for installation on that. So. Hope you guys liked the video. Thanks for watching. If you like this videos, please subscribe down below and like. Appreciate it, guys. Till next time.